Hi and welcome to this section of the Calculus 3 Tutor and in this section and actually in this section and the next several sections we're going to tackle the topic of line integrals and I split this topic up into several little sections because I think it'll flow a little bit better that way. So line integrals is what we're going to talk about here and uh, the introduction to it anyway and we're going to do several problems that talk about that. So what is a line integral? Okay. What it is is just remember back from Calculus 1 when you were first introduced to the concept of an integral Okay, you had a f of x, you integrated from a to b, and you integrated that function, and you integrated, you integrated it along x because it was a function of x. It's the only direction you could really integrate. It was a, uh, you know, a function of one variable, so you could only integrate along that variable. Okay, now we started doing the double integrals and the triple integrals, but those were all integrals really over over a volume, or at least the triple integrals were over a, uh, over a volume, and the double integrals were actually over sort of a volume too, defined from the x, x y plane up to the function. So those were sort of three-dimensional integrals, so to speak, integrating a function over a region, over a, over a, over a volume, or, 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 or over an area, or something like this, okay? What a line integral is, is let's say you have a function here that's it could be a three-dimensional function a function of three variables sitting out in front of us here between me and you okay and you have an XYZ system kind of superimposed grid right here um, in the room well you could obviously integrate along X okay you can integrate that function along Y you can integrate it along Z but what if I didn't want to integrate in any one of those directions what if I wanted to integrate in any arbitrary path I wanted to maybe I don't even want to integrate along a line per se maybe I want to integrate along some sort of curved path okay I can do that with a line integral okay so just to draw the analogy in one variable f of x you always integrated from a to b because that's the only direction you could go but now that we're starting to talk about all these three-dimensional functions functions that go in x y and z then you may not want to integrate as a, as a, in a linear fashion from, from A to B along X and Y or along the X direction or along the Y direction, you may want to start from here and trace a little path down from a starting point to an ending point and kind of sum up the little values of that function along, along that point, okay? Along that path, okay? So that's called a line integral. Now, it is called a line integral. You don't actually have to integrate in lines. You can integrate along any path you want. It could be a little curved path could be a little little wiggly path from A to B or whatever you want to do. So that's what we're going to talk about here. It's not a big deal. I'm going to show you the kind of the general formula for what you're going to end up doing and then we're going to apply it to some problems. The first thing you need to do when you're, you're dealing with a line integral, you, you need to define your path, okay? You need to figure out how you're going to to express this path that goes from point A to point B and maybe has some squiggly you know, journey along the way and we're going to do that by way of what we learned in calculus 2 which which is a uh, parameterizing an equation okay using a parametric equation basically is what it is that's how we're going to describe the uh, the path that we're taking which is basically a vector it's basically a vector uh, the tip of a vector is what we're going to use to describe that so first let's just move on and 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 say which we already really said we can integrate a three-dimensional function along any path in space we know we can do this the first thing we need to do is define the path that we want to take and we're going to define that path by way of a vector okay it's a function of t I'll tell you why we're doing that in a second but what we're going to say is it's going to have an x of t in the i direction a y of t in the j direction and a z of t in the k direction okay so this should look familiar